Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we are starting this last week. Uh, this is the week number four. So we are in the last four days of this course. So we are going to work on the last topics that we have for this module. And you are going to be, we can say, free of this course. So we are almost, almost at the end of this, um, of this month of work. Um, it's pretty, like, funny. Uh, how the time is going uh, really fast in these days, because uh, you know that. We are, uh, began this, um, this module in a couple of days, and now we are at the ending of this course. So times go really, really fast, and we are at the end. We are just going to have four more days of this course, and then we are going to complete all the information that we are working on this module. I know that uh, I think that all of you have finished the activities on the platform. So I just want to say congratulations to the one that um that just complete all the activities that you have on the platform. And I think that um, many of you have completed that part because it is the last week and you need to uh, have to complete that part from this day, I think. Just give me a moment. I'm going to charge the document and all of the things that we need to have for this um for this session. So give me a moment. And also I'm going to charge the platform. So we are going to see what is the topic that we are going to develop um, today. And also we are going to continue developing a different grammatical topics for this week. So we are going to see what is the topics about to this last week. Okay, it's like taking some time to charge the platform, but we are going to begin with the document. Because we are going to read the phrase for today. And let me show you what is the phrase. Okay, today we have this uh, motivational phrase or this phrase that is uh, going to help you with the activities that you are performing uh, during your day, during your life. And it says, 
Life without dreams is like a bird with a broken wing. It can fly. Basically, it's saying that we need to have different dreams. It is necessary that we can dream about the different things that we want to, to achieve in our life. Um, sometimes we have like very different uh, dreams. There are some of them are not impossible, but they are very hard to achieve those goals. But you know that um, in our life, we need to have this kind of motivation to complete all the th activities or to do all the jobs that we need to do to complete or to achieve the goals that we have for maybe a year, maybe for a week, maybe in our lifetime. So in this case, we need to have a lot of dreams. But also you need to, to have like some plans in which you are going to uh, see what is the best way to achieve or to complete the activity or the dream that you have. So in this case, we need to have dreams, different, different dreams. Okay, in this case, we are going to begin talking about different uh, tenses that we have in English. So we are going to talk about uh, the present tenses. Um, but in this case, we are not just going to have like a, a review. In this case, we are going to talk about a specific um, tense in present. Vamos a hablar un poco de los tiempos que nosotros encontramos en el idioma inglés. En este caso, vamos a comenzar no con todos los tiempos, ¿verdad? Sino que vamos a hablar del present perfect tense. Vamos a hablar del presente perfecto. Vamos a ver cómo funciona esto, cómo lo utilizamos. Um, para nuestra, uh, para la adquisición del idioma, cómo lo vamos a poner en práctica y todo eso. In this case, you already know something about the present perfect, but we are going to uh, like make a reinforcement of the information. And also we are just going to remember different clues, different things um, related to this topic. But give me a moment, uh, the platform is done. So give me a second. Okay, we have here the platform and we are going to see what is the first thing that we are going to like review of this topic. But in this case, let me see. I need to go to the section five. That is the, the one that um we are going to complete this week. We're going to begin with a conversation that is called a visit to New Orleans. A video later in the weekend, and we will be talking about the different the conversation, and then we are going to be related to this. Section 10 is a list of new people in New Orleans. See present perfect in context. Listen and practice. It's great to see you, Todd. Have you been in New Orleans long? Just a few days. I'm really excited to be here. I can't wait to show you the city. Have you been to a jazz club yet? Yeah, I've already been to one. Oh, well, how about a riverboat tour? Uh, I've already done that, too. Have you ridden in a streetcar? They're a lot of fun. Actually, that's how I got here today. Well, is there anything you want to do? You know, I really just want to take it easy. My feet are killing me. Listen and practice.
I'm sorry, my computer is kind of slow. I think that it is kind of tired or something like that because it's not uh working like other days. So that's why I, I was like having a kind of troubles to they, um, maybe have experience or something like that. Again, we have and then begin saying, it's great to see you, Todd. Have you been in New Orleans long? She's making a question related to the time in which he, he is stayed in that place. And he said, just a few days. I'm really excited to be here. I can't wait to show you the city. Had you been to a jazz club yet? Yeah, I've already been to one. Oh, well, how about a private boat tour? Oh, I have already done that too. Have you ridden in the streetcar? They are a lot of fun. Actually, that's how I got here today. Well, is there anything you want to do? You know, I really just want to take it easy. My feet are killing me. Si vemos las preguntas, ahí estamos viendo la estructura que es la que, en la que nos vamos a enfocar nosotros, donde eh, utilizan el have you been. Eh, y también la respuesta de I've or I have already been. We are going to see what is this um, structure make or we are going to um, like understand what is this structure about. So we are going to see the other video. Hi, in this lesson we will study present perfect with already and yet. Ask and answer questions in present perfect with irregular and regular past participles. I want you to concentrate on this new tense. Notice how it is formed. Pay close attention to the words already and yet. Present perfect. Already, yet. The present perfect is formed with the verb have plus the past participle. Have you been to a jazz club? Yes, I've been to several. No, I haven't been to one. Has she ridden in a streetcar? Yes, she's ridden in one. No, she hasn't ridden in one. Has he called home lately? Yes, he's called twice this week. No, he hasn't called in months. Have they eaten dinner yet? Yes, they've already eaten. No, they haven't eaten yet. Contractions. I've equals I have. You've equals you have. He's equals he has. She's equals she has. It's equals it has. We've equals we have. They've equals they have haven't equals have not hasn't equals has not for present perfect we will use have or has plus past participle verb plus complement the verb have or has will depend on the person we will talk about we use present perfect when we want to express actions which began in the past and continue in the present example she has worked in the bank for five years. We have had the same car for 10 years. When we want to make reference to an unfinished temporary period of time, I have worked hard this week. It has rained a lot this year. We haven't seen her today. Repeated actions in a specific period of time between the present and the past. They have seen that film six times. We have eaten all that restaurant many times. When timing is not relevant or it is unknown, someone has eaten my soup. Now let's talk about already and yet. Already usually goes after have or has and before the main verb. Examples, we have already had our breakfast. When are you going to do your homework? But I've already done it. Yet means that something that we expected has happened or hasn't happened. 
we usually put it at the end of a sentence. Examples. Has the post arrived yet? Have you done your homework? Not yet. Haven't you got ready yet? Look at the time. Okay, we have uh, some information related to the structure of the present perfect. So we are going to continue with that part. We are going to learn more about the present perfect and how to create statements. Uh, we are going to see some uh, important information related to this topic. Um, and we are going to continue with other details, I guess, tomorrow. So we are going to uh, have two different days to talk about uh, this topic. And then we are going to take the other two days to talk about another structure, or in this case, another um, tense. And we are going to see some example and all of these things. So we are going to begin with the name of the topic. And we are going to begin with a question. What is the present perfect tense? And we have here the answer. It says, the past actions that are related to or continue in the present. It is easily recognized by the auxiliary verbs have and has. Okay, in this case, we are talking about actions that are like continuing in the present or has some influence in the present. Este, eh, esta estructura tiene que ver con el, la continuidad, ¿verdad? De acciones en el presente o que están relacionadas con el presente. Quiere decir que pudieron haber comenzado tiempo atrás, pero que siguen ocurriendo en el presente o que tienen una influencia, ¿verdad? En el presente. And we have the auxiliary verbs has and have in this structure. Now, how do we use this present perfect tense? Okay, in this case, in the present perfect tense, the main verbs always use the auxiliary verbs have and has. The main verb takes a participle form, especially the past participle. Básicamente, ¿verdad? Estamos diciendo de que eh, los verbos principales siempre van a utilizar el auxiliar has y have, dependiendo, ¿verdad? De la persona. Y que también eh, puede tomar la forma del participio, específicamente en el pasado participio.
We are going to see some examples. In this case, we are going to divide these examples into the different persons that we have. So in this case, we have the first person. And it says, I have come a long way. Second person. You have come long way. Third person. But in this case, plural. They have come a long way. They have come a long way. And we are going to see the third person singular. He, she, or it. has come a long way. Now we are going to see the different uses that we can give to this uh, tense or this structure. And we are going to begin with number one, the present perfect tense for a statements. This one said that for general statements, the most common use of the present perfect use have or has plus the past participle form of the member. Para crear oraciones simples, ¿verdad? En este caso, eh, simplemente oraciones que no sean negativas ni eh, oraciones interrogativas, vamos a utilizar lo que es el, eh, el auxiliar have or has más el pasado participio de el verbo principal. And we are going to see some examples. We have have or has plus the past participle. And we have here the subject. This is the structure. The subject plus has or have. Last past participle plus the complement. And we are going to see the examples. Following this structure, we have here the first one Charlotte. has become friends with Will. Next one. 
We have been broken up before, but time feels different. So in this case, we have the um, the general structure to create these statements. They are like positive statements, and you are not going to use um, negative words or something like that. So in this case, uh, you are just going to use this structure that we have here, this one. And then you can create your uh, statements. But let me see. If I can, I can find a, an image in which you can have like different uh, ideas about the present perfect. Okay, I have this one. And let me see if I find another one here. Oh, this one is very interesting too. And we are going to have this one that is six reasons to use the present perfect in English. So I'm going to put the image on the document to see something related to this part. Well, give me a second. I'm moving the images and I'm going to show you what are they about. We have more information, but let me make this like a uh, to show you the different images I, that I have for you. So give me a couple of minutes. Okay, I have here these three photos. This one is the first one. The next Just give me a moment, I'm making this one better for you. This one is the other one. And the last one. There it is. In this case, we're just going to see a little bit the images that we have here, and then we are going to continue with the other part of the information. So in this case, we have the present perfect tense and how to build them. And in this case, you're going to find this one in which you are going to find like the construction of the positive statements, then you are going to find the construction of the negative one and question. And of course, you are going to find how to create your questions with WH words. So in this case, you have the different structures that you are going to use in using this present perfect tense and then you are going to find some examples in the image. 
So in the first case, we have I, we, you, they, plus have, plus B3, E, D. They have cleaned our room. In this case, it is related to the uh, verbs in past that are like regular verbs. Then we have a negative I, we, you, they, haven't, B3, E, D. They haven't, in this case, it's um, not using the end, the not, because in that case, it's kind of uh, incorrect, the form they are using, the auxiliary. But you know that this one is not. Next one is these. Uh, the perfect, the present perfect tense, like the uses of this tense, we have for finished actions, recent completed actions, unfinished actions, multiple action or different times, life experiences, accomplishments, and changes over time. And of course, they have an example. Then we have six uh, reasons to use the present perfect in English. So in this one, we have the six different um, reasons and they have like um, some examples. In the first one, we have to talk about finished actions in unfinished time. Tenemos ahí que lo vamos a utilizar o la razón por la que lo vamos a utilizar es para hablar de acciones que ya finalizaron en un tiempo que no ha finalizado todavía. Que sigue, ¿verdad? Incluso en el presente. Y tenemos algunos ejemplos. I have been to the shops today. The clue in these um, statements is the word today. He sent, he has sent 14 emails this morning. This morning, this afternoon, this evening. We have watched a good film tonight. Tonight, this time. So you are going to find a lot of examples yeah. here. Then we have number two to talk about life experience. Um, number three to talk about very recent actions. Number four to talk about unfinished actions in unfinished time. Uh, number five with adverse of frequency. And number six to talk about future timetable. So in those images, you are going to find a lot of information and a more related to this topic. So you can check on the images to learn more about this uh, tense. Now, we are going to continue with number two. The present perfect tense for negatives. To use the present perfect tense in the negative, simply add the negative word, like not or never after the auxiliary verb, but before the past participle.
So in this case, we have the following structure. Have or has. Plus negative word. Plus past participle. And we have the examples. I have not slept well since exam started. I have not slept My friend has never seen the ocean. My friend has never seen the ocean. In this case, when we can use the words neither and nor, because we can create this kind of a, a statements using neither and nor, we can use this structure too. And we are going to see the following example. It's 11 in the morning and she has neither eaten breakfast nor gotten dressed. En este caso, esa estructura es como decir, um, son las 11 de la mañana y ella ni se ha, ni ha comido, ni se ha cambiado. En ese caso, es básicamente como ese tipo de, de oraciones o ese tipo de frases, las que nosotros podemos construir con el neither nor. Next one, number three. The present perfect tense for question. When asking a question in the present perfect tense, the auxiliary verb comes first followed by the subject and then in the past participle of the main verb. This follows a similar construction as question with the auxiliary verb do, which also comes before the subject. All of the questions have almost the same structure, but they are changing some elements. So in this case, it's almost the same with, with a little changes.
Now we are going to see the structure. We have Haven has plus the subject plus past participle. Aquí ya sabemos que siempre para hacer una pregunta lo que vamos a hacer es cambiar nada más eh, el orden, ¿verdad? En el que ponemos las palabras. En este caso cambiamos nuestro sujeto a segundo plano. Ya no queda siempre en el primer lugar, sino que ya pasa a segundo lugar. And we are going to see some examples. Have you eaten dinner yet? And has the party start? Now we are going to see more uh, statements with present perfect form. So we are going to see more examples in which you can find like how to use this structure better.
Okay, so we have some examples here of the use of this structure. So we have, I have fixed my computer. She has closed the book. I have closed my store. We have invited the family. Tommy has painted the car. My friend have come to visit me. Diego has closed the door. I have enjoyed the vacations. My friend died yesterday. I have needed your love. I have worked in the bank for 20 years. Have you ever seen the rain? My friends have painted some craft. How do you, and, and these are, um, I mean, these are some structures or some phrases that we can like um, create with this structure. So we need to, to use the auxiliaries and the um, like, the specific form of the verb in which you are going to create this kind of statements. And that's it. It is not like a uh, more complicated than that. So you need to, to know what is the structure or what is the tense or the form in which you are going to use the verb. And then you are going to create this kind of questions or a statement or negative phrases. Now, we're going to see the last thing. We are almost done with this uh, session. So we are going to um, learn how to use the present perfect tense with adverbs. So we are going to talk about the adverbs. You can still use adverb after the verb as you do normally. Um, with the present perfect tense, you can also place the adverb between the auxiliary verb and the past participle. In este caso, cuando vayamos a utilizar los adverbs, um, podemos utilizarlos después del verbo, como normalmente lo hacemos. Um, Pero en este caso, podemos también poner el adverbio en medio del auxiliar y del past participle. Entonces, podemos hacerlo de dos formas. Uno, poniendo el adverb después del de verbo o de la segunda forma, que es poniendo el adverb en medio, ¿verdad? Del auxiliar y del past participle, o sea, del verbo en past participle. And in this case, we have the following structure. Has or have. Plus the adverb. Plus the past participle. And we are going to see some examples. They have gradually advanced their career from cashier to senior manager.
So in this uh, statement, we have here the structure have gradually advanced. I'm going to mark this one. And here we have the adverb gradually. Oh, I don't like that color. This one. Next one, I have always needed your love. And we have this structure again, I have always needed. We have here the structure and here we have the adverb, always. The adverb yet is used often with a negative or in question. Almost always comes at the end of the sentence or clause. Cuando vayamos a utilizar el yet, que también, verdad, es parte de los adverbs, tenemos que eh, recordar que esta estructura o esta palabra normalmente la utilizamos con oraciones negativas y con preguntas. Casi siempre va al final de la oración o de la cláusula. So in that case, we need to remember that yet is used with negative and with questions. And also it comes almost always at the end of the sentence or the clause. And we are going to see some examples. We have here, sadly he has finished the race yet. Have you finished your homework yet? Okay, in this case, we're talking about the different um, forms or structures in which we can um, use this structure or this tense. You know that we have a lot of tenses, or in this case, we have three main tenses in, in English. Uh, we have the past, the present, and the future. And each of these has four, like, four different tenses and in this case we are going to or in this case we we're learning about one of the tenses that we can see on the present tense sabemos que tenemos tres tiempos eh, podemos llamarlos como tres tiempos generales en lo que es el inglés en este caso tenemos el pasado el presente y el futuro y cada uno de ellos tiene aproximadamente cuatro partes Cuatro partes que nosotros tenemos que aprender a utilizar eh, cuando estamos hablando en inglés. En este caso, pues hemos visto un poco de lo que es el eh, present perfect, que es una de las partes del de presente. Eh, tenemos el presente simple, el presente continuo, presente perfecto, presente perfecto continuo. 
And we have four different things and we need to, to learn how to use every of these structures to know what is the difference between them and uh, what are the different like ideas that we can construct with these structures. So in this case, we have this kind of information and uh, we are going to continue. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, we are going to continue tomorrow with some ideas about this uh, topic, and then we are going to continue with other information that we have. So we are going to end here this session, and we are going to see each other tomorrow. Remember that this is the last week, so we are going to continue with the last topic. So have a really good night, and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Tisha. See you. See you. See you. See you.